in your public television. And it's a California's Gold classic. When we reach the verdant valley and the winding mountain stream, see great cliffs and waterfalls pass in review. Find the skies by day all sunny and at night be decked with stars. Then we know that we are in Yosemite. Here in Yosemite, fair nature's wondrous gem, our hearts o'erflow with peace and joy and love. Each day from dawn till dawn, only the merry song is ever heard here in Yosemite. You know, it's hard to describe Yosemite in words. Everything about it is so spectacular and on such a grand scale. Driving into the park and then along the valley floor, the great granite domes and peaks tower over you and leave you in awe. Now, this was California's first state park. Of course, now it's a national park and a national treasure. We were there in search of a chapter out of Yosemite's past, a part of Yosemite's rich history. It was called the Firefall, and for almost 100 years, from 1872 to 1969, Millions of people witnessed it. In fact, many people came to Yosemite just for the firefall. Every night during the summer months at exactly 9 o'clock, this event took place, lighting up the sky. It literally took on a life of its own over the years. It became its own living legend. And now, over 25 years after the last firefall took place, it was time for us to return to the site of the firefall. Whoa. Going up here, <laughs> all the way up. And now getting there was an adventure in itself. To be honest with you, we could have driven, but who wants to drive when you can go by mule? Our journey started at the base of Sentinel Rock, and took us on a narrow, rocky trail that had been cut out of the side of the mountain with picks and shovels back in the 1800s. It's 4.8 miles long, and in that distance, we gained 3,200 feet in elevation, and along the way saw some spectacular scenery. Lots of switchbacks and very narrow sections. I shot this film myself with my high camera to show just how rocky and narrow and exciting this trail was. Our destination, Glacier Point, over 7,200 feet in elevation and a place where you get a breathtaking view of Yosemite High Country, which of course is dominated by a half dome. This was also the site of the world famous Glacier Point Hotel a Yosemite landmark until it burned down in 1969. Okay, we have finished lunch, and now we are getting the tour of where that grand old hotel used to be. Where did it actually sit? Basically, it was oh, right in the area. We're walking in here up to that rock, uh, continuing on down almost over to where the other concession buildings are now and the other rocks. This is where you would be sitting on that veranda looking out over there. Correct, except about 20 feet up, maybe. So. <laughs> 25 feet up. Now, you know of what you're speaking because you were the manager of Absolutely. this hotel. Yeah, and I was very fond of that hotel. It was very exciting. It was very busy. <clears throat> you know, from an innkeeper point of view, interesting people, the weather, and not to mention the wildlife, and I really mean this, and this used to be bear country. So there were bears up here. Bears, very, many, many bears. Were they friendly bears? Was this well, part of the attraction for tourists to come up here? Well, it wasn't 
part of an attraction, but they were here, so it became an attraction automatically. What was it like up here back in the days when the hotel was here? Was it really as grand a place as it looks like in all the old photographs? Very, very much so. As a matter of fact, you see, this morning when I came up, and I hadn't been here for a few years because now I'm in the back country, and <clears throat> it did very, it did something to me. All of a sudden, I was very, very nostalgic because it was the grand place, yes. Well, you know, <clears throat> everybody that comes to Yosemite used to take a drive up here. To Glacier Point. To Glacier Point. To see the hotel. To see the hotel. Then, of course, they stayed. The people came up uh, to have lunch or dinner. And then some of them stayed to watch the firefall, which we will talk about it later, right? Well, now, the view is exactly the same as it would have been when the hotel was here. It hadn't changed a bit. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, as Dick was pointing out, this was the front of the hotel, and I was upstairs in my room, and this is the view that I had. Every morning, every night, Half Dome would be at my window. So that was your view? That was my view. You were spoiled rotten. I was, yeah. But did you I know it at the time? <laughs> I did, but I worked very hard at the same time. But I loved it. Now we're coming to the point of Glacier Point because this is the place where the famous firefall actually originated, right? Exactly. This was the spot right over here. The only and <clears throat> we used to build the firefall early in the morning. Uh -huh. And one of the reason why we did it early in the morning, between 4.30 and 5 o'clock in the morning, because you can well imagine, try to do it in the middle of the afternoon, it was too crowded because the bark was stored down below here, a few hundred feet. We had a truck, and we would come up here. We would always put 10 wheelbarrows of uh, red fir bark. I've seen pictures. That's right. They're kind of stacked up about like this. That's right. Ten wheelbarrows, you know, just like that. And then, so we used to, <clears throat> I used to set it up early in the morning at the beginning of the season before some of my employees would come up. And invariably, at that time, there would be someone here at the point asking me to hold a piece of bark so they could take a photo. And I would never disappoint them. Well, you were famous. You were part of the firefall. Well, I, I don't know if I was famous, but it was a lot of fun, and you meet a lot of people, and you have a lot of conversation. I mean, what was your job exactly? What would well, you do? Once, once I would pile the bark, then 